I was recording vocals with Chiarelli of Conquer Divide and she literally just nailed the take. But there was one really huge problem. I was afraid to tell her in fear of destroying her confidence. What was I supposed to do? Well, the answer might surprise you. By the end of this video, I'll show you the most important thing about getting your vocals right and how editing can be used as a tool to save great takes. Hey there, my name is Joey Sturgis and I'm here to teach you all about audio production and help you unleash your creativity in the studio. If you're anything like me, you totally love creating music and manipulating audio. So if that's you, you're in the right place because we're about to build up our audio knowledge together and have the sickest sounding recordings on planet Earth. Let's jump into it. Vocals are the center point of most songs and often can require the most attention and care. Getting your vocals recorded and edited just right is life or death for audio production. So the first step to editing vocals like you hear on popular records is to get your bearings straight and to comp the takes. Now comping is when you select a single take from multiple takes to build better performances. Some people consider this cheating, but honestly, we're talking about recorded production here. If you think Freddie Mercury recorded Bohemian Rhapsody in one take, you're living in a fantasy world. And he's an incredible vocalist. Comping is an art form, and selecting the takes is half the battle because they set the stage for what you're going to be working with to form the final vocals. We're not saying you have to comp everything, but it's a common practice. The reason why it's so powerful is because it allows the vocalist to perform parts multiple times, focusing on different parts of their voice or different parts of the performance each time they try the take. Then from these takes, we can select the best of the best to form an ultimate best take. This means you'll be able to get the vocals to sound their absolute best. Producers like Mutt Lang are well known for doing comps as detailed as breaths from one take, beginning of syllables from another take, ending of words from another take, and so on. There's really no need to get that detailed with it, but even a basic comp can really improve the sound of a performance before ever touching a processing plugin. Next, you're gonna wanna start working on time correction. In my opinion, having a vocal that's absolutely on beat and rhythmically in the pocket is when a vocal starts to sound tight and polished. Vocalists aren't always perfectly on time, and so we may need to make a few cuts and slide a few takes around, or even reach for some sort of stretching or warping tool to make some of the parts shorter or longer than they were performed. It's important to get the timing right because you don't want to end up in a scenario where harmonies, background vocals, or even vocal stacks are all out of sync with each other. It just ends up sounding like a huge mess, and the goal is to make the vocals sound big and powerful and well-produced. So for you, that means you'll want to be looking at every single vocal. Where does it start? Where does it end? And where it lies within relation to all the other vocals in the production. Making sure to move and stretch any part that isn't falling on the desired beats. Next, we have what is arguably the most important and definitely the most controversial, the pitch. The pitch of a vocal is generally what makes a vocal sound flawless or amateur. If the pitch is off even by just a few cents, it can start to sound like it deviates away from the music or that it simply isn't harmonious with the music. Singing in general is not easy and having great pitch is really hard and getting it nailed on a recording is even harder. There are a lot of variables. This is why we may need to reach for some pitch correction here or there to improve a part. One time I was recording Chiarelli of Conquer Divide and she was getting to the point where her voice was a little tired and it was breaking on some notes. This happens to all vocalists in the studio because they actually sing for way more hours than they ever would on stage. A typical show might be like one to two hours of vocals, but the studio can be sometimes four times that amount. So it's no wonder how voices can break. Well, anyway, Kia nailed a take, but one little note was off. I didn't want to make her do the whole line all over again just for one little note because it would be wasting her vocal gas for no mileage. Instead, I used autotune to correct the little part that was off and I saved the whole take. This is a perfect example of how you must think like a producer in the studio so that you can save the vocalist, save the take, and save the production with a small decision like this and making sure to take care of the vocalist's voice. Anyway, this is what I think, but there is something that is always more interesting and that is what you think. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe and follow to see more. Do you want to learn more about my audio production process? Well, you're in luck because I've teamed up with Creative Live to give you my exact methods for audio production step by step in what we call the Studio Pass. This class is packed with everything you need to craft audio productions just like mine. Click the link in this video to enroll now. I will be compensated when you make a purchase. I'm also going to make a special offer. If you can purchase the class, send me a receipt to support at joeysturgistones.com and you'll get a free JST plugin up to $49 in value. How awesome is that? Click the link on this video and grab my Studio Pass class with Creative Live. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about how to have creative mixes in a few hours without any formal mixing training. I'll see you then. Happy mixing.